okay uh, <coughs> propositional hydraulics is very different in the sense uh, it requires input devices such as uh, joystick steering wheels etc so this is the inside cabin of a excavator uh, jcb excavating machine so you can see he's got a lever in his hand he's got his foot pedals etc and using this he's giving an analog signal to his hydraulic system okay so for proportional hydraulics the components are very different you require input uh, devices like foot pedal joystick which give the set point values you require pid controllers and then you need these proportional servo walls manifolds etc so these components are very different from the standard uh, hydraulic pneumatic components also there are three types of walls one is the basic tunnel control wall now this is seen in every trainer kit uh, hydraulic pneumatic trainer kit which most of the colleges have and you press a particular solenoid it operates it goes on and off we call it bang bang uh, walls on off walls okay but they do not have analog control the second type is the proportional wall now proportional walls have solenoids on both sides and there are arrows on the solenoids so these arrows indicate that i can attach a analog signal to this okay and the third type is the servo wall which has got a servo motor attached to the particular wall very highly accurate control so now <clears throat> if you see the difference between proportional and servo walls okay where my mouse is if you i'll just try to zoom into this one minute <clears throat> okay okay if you see in a proportional valve this is the internal spool and you see here where my mouse is this is the overlapping area here you see there is a overlap here and this is known as a dead band okay so this dead band if it is equal to more than 3 or more percent it is comes, comes under the proportional valve category whereas in the servo valve if you see the overlap at the same position here it is almost zero yeah so this comes under proportional valve category and uh, let me show you uh, yeah so here if you see if you see the flow curves this is the dead band in the middle here when the spool is uh, moving and it is trying to open up the flow so if this dead band is 3% or more it comes under proportional valve category if this is under 1% or lesser it comes under uh, servo valve category okay so proportional valve looks something like this a small uh, video <clears throat> if you see this is the way a proportional valve will operate okay whereas if you see a servo valve servo valve is quite different there's a motor mounted on the valve here okay so that is how a, uh, a servo valve uh, behaves now how does automation studio handle these servo and proportional valves okay so if you see this particular valve here this is a proportional valve it has got an arrow on this and in automation studio the accuracy of this valve is decided by this flow curve here you see this dead band here between this point and this point this will decide how accurate you want to make this valve or not make it so this can behave very accurate less accurate 3% dead band 1% almost zero dead band etc okay so this definition is done here now <clears throat> in this case what we are doing is 
we are attaching a joystick to the proportional valve here as an input signal and we'll be plotting <coughs> the, uh, the joystick versus the piston position so i'm starting the simulation <coughs> and using my joystick i'm operating the particular solenoid valve here. so if you see this is proportional control uh, but there is one very big drawback if I want my piston to stay at a particular position, it is running in one direction. I have to play with my joystick to make it stable at one particular point. And this is not a very desired behavior and it is very, very inaccurate. Imagine such a type of a behavior in a JCB machine. Like if I move my joystick and the arm will go and hit someone's roof or do something else altogether. So this is not desirable. And that is the reason we need PID feedback, control loop, hydraulic circuits. These will be very, very accurate. So now for that, uh, <clears throat> I'll open up a PID feedback circuit. Okay. Automation Studio has a PID <clears throat> controller. And using this PID controller, I can take piston position, compare it to joystick position the pid controller will calculate the error and then drive the particular uh, proportional valve i'll show you how this works because we also get a lot of queries as to how do i conduct a pid experiment in my syllabus now there are certain things i'll tell you <coughs> which uh, which are very interesting compared to matlab simulating how does the real physical system behave compared to a MATLAB simulating PID experiment. Okay. Now, number one, uh, see this particular circuit now. In this particular circuit, I have a control device. This is a PID control device here. Okay. <clears throat> As an input, I have taken a graph signal. This graph signal I have taken here. Okay. Because if I, instead of joystick, joystick, if I use, I'm using it manually, I'll not get an accurate graph to compare input versus output. That is the reason in this case, I've taken a set uh, periodic graph. In this graph, if you see, I've set the limit of the Y scale from minus 10 to plus 10, but the graph, I have not taken it right up to minus 10 to plus 10. I've kept it at the bottom at around nine and at the top, I've kept it around eight. It's not touching the end position. Okay. So that is the graph which is coming to the control device. This particular piston has got a sensor signal, position sensor here. This is the analog signal coming from my piston. So that signal is coming to my PID controller. This PID controller will calculate the error and then send it to my uh, solenoid valve here. Okay. And in my graph, in my plotter, I'm plotting the input versus output here. Okay. So now when you're teaching PID theory to students and you're teaching them PID tuning, typically you might be teaching them Ziegler Nichols method or it could be manual tuning method. But generally they talk about one thing is that first keep the proportional gain high, let's say eight, zero, zero, and reach a condition which is known as ultimate oscillation uh, condition. So here you can see there are oscillations happening in my uh, circuit there. The piston is oscillating. After this is done, you when you reach this particular condition, cut down the proportional gain to approximately half this value. <clears throat> so let's say I make it 3.5, introduce integral, integral gain of let's say 1, derivative of still keeping at 0. And now if you see the behavior of input versus output, I have achieved a quite accurate PID control uh, uh, condition here input versus output is quite accurate to each other the behaviors okay but now you will say okay this happens also in matlab simulink okay but matlab simulink is a mathematical model you are giving a step input to a mathematical pid controller and you are just checking the output you are not taking into consideration the flow rate of the pump the focus of the particular wall the load on the particular piston are the damping springs acting on this etc and in very small steps, I'll show you how much of a problem <clears throat> MATLAB simulating is compared to a real physical system. So let's say I change proportional gain back to eight. 
I make integral zero, and I get a condition of oscillation here again. Okay. Now I'll do a very simple thing. I'll go to my pump displacement, and I reduce my pump displacement. The moment I reduce my pump displacement, because of the inertia of the particular flow and the piston, you see that half the oscillations have disappeared. Now what happens to MATLAB mathematical models and their theory? So in MATLAB, if you want to put in all these values of a real physical system, you really have to be at a scientist level where you have to conceive every possible thing like viscosity of fluids, temperature, springs, inertia of the spools of the walls. What are the signals acting on the particular uh, solenoid valve, etc. So a lot of these things you have to conceive and then make the entire mathematical model, then apply it to the MATLAB simulating uh, model, then it will behave like a real physical system. Whereas in this case, since it's already got a fluid power background, okay, it is behaving the way it should actually behave in a physical system. Yeah. Also, these oscillations will dampen if I go and put a load on the piston rod, or let's say I change the piston inclination to 90 degrees, all these curves will automatically start changing. That is when the true behavior of a PID signal is seen. Okay. Also, like I told you before, Automation Studio now also has a block diagram library. This is a block diagram library. Now, this is what uh, Simulink has, MATLAB Simulink. So if, you're, if you don't want to use the basic PID control of Automation Studio, you can go ahead and build your own <coughs> block diagram like this. Okay. And this can be connected to a hydraulic pneumatic system. For example, in Jadavpur University, Calcutta, they built a, a four-legged robo. It is an M-Tech department. Let me M-Tech mechatronic. Let me check if I have this. Uh, OK, it is here, yes. <clears throat> So this was a M-Tech Mechatronics Department project in uh, Jadapur University, Calcutta. And uh, these people were doing the entire control system design in uh, LabVIEW, testing it out, then redoing it in Simulink because the hardware interface which they had was for Simulink. So this mathematical modeling was done in the background, controlling the hydraulic pneumatic system. Here. So the uh, professors there, the PhD research professors, when they saw Automation Studio can do so much of PID tuning automatically without having to write so much of uh, LabVIEW or simulating code in the background, they were very happy because 60-70% of their work was saved because of the uh, models of Automation Studio. This is what they had built. <clears throat> so uh, we have this block diagram module now and that can also behave like the mathematical model. You can see here. So this graph is the mathematical model of the PID tuning experiment here. Yeah. But this is only mathematics. This is not connected to the hydraulic pneumatics. OK. So we have a uh, mathematical block diagram library also. 